Hey folks, I'm Dieter Melhorn. In this video, I'm gonna use some new technology here on my channel to show you where I was fishing on this fishing trip and exactly why I was fishing there. Now on this particular trip, I was out early in the morning. I had some light winds out of the east. Uh, there was just enough to barely move the boat, but I dropped the trolling motor in the water to kind of keep my speed and direction constant. And I was dragging over an area that is basically a big flat and just trying to look to see if there were any catfish in the area. All right, guys, we got one slamming a planter board. And I mean, slammed it. Working this fella up here. We will see. Straight underneath the boat at this time. Woo! He's a tainer. He's a tainer. Just saw it. Where's the bag of grip? Always on the opposite side of the boat. He's a. He's a. Get up here. Get up here. There's some rods around. Good fish. Good fish to start the morning with. Oh, yeah. That's what you want right there. That's what you want. Good old fish. A little piece of cut bait. Oh, yeah. Almost 20. Okay. Good fish. Almost 20. Good fish. Take those all day long right there. It's a good one. Happy fish. Happy fish. You're going to be even happier when I do this. All right, guys, I'm going to give you a little breakdown here and show you exactly where I was fishing. Uh, show you what the bottom of the lake looks like using this Navionics mapping software. This is the same thing I run on my boat. Uh, you can download an app for your smartphone to where you can use this same mapping software to see what's going on, uh, whether you're bank fishing or if you're on a boat that does not have uh, chart plotting on it. Now, the area I was starting out in, I had an east to west wind blowing, so it was blowing this way across the lake. Uh, east over here, normal orientation on this map, blowing to the west. Very mild wind, didn't have a lot. Uh, dropped the trolling motor in, was using it, and uh, just to keep me steady and going. But I started over here in this deep part. This is the river channel. You can kind of see if you look at this, uh, if you're not used to looking at um, a topographic map with lines, it may take you a little bit to get used to it. Basically, the lines show changes in elevation. Uh, and I think this is set to a two foot increment, maybe. Um, so for every line, uh, it changes a set amount. And when you get lines close together, like right here, this is the edge of the old river that used to come through here. It's very steep. When you get to a place like this where they're spread out, it's very flat. So you can see even the bottom of the river channel doesn't change that much. It's pretty flat across here. It's just these edges where it's steep over here on the bank where it's very steep over here, like on this point where it's steep. So what I was doing was drifting this deeper water just to see if there were any fish in the river channel. And I started out coming this way and basically just made my way across the lake drifting in this direction. Boom, I think we got one going on this rod. I'm out into the river channel now. Uh, came off of this little flat next to it. Came out here in deeper water just to see if there's anything in here. I got a small fish. I've got six rods out dragging the bottom on Santee rigs, and then I've got two lines suspended underneath the boat, about 12, 16 feet. I'm seeing some stuff, middle of the water column. I think they may be carp, but they're pretty sizable. So I'm putting some baits down there. Come on, little fella. I want to get you in the boat, so I'm going to nurse you. You feel like a channel. Shaking that head like a channel cat. It is a channel cat. Mr. Channel Cat, AC, simmer down. Simmer down, boss man. That's a little 
channel cat there. Belly's full. Good old belly. Get him off my hand. What did he hit? Uh, he was on a little bitty piece of brim. I've had no luck with big baits lately. I've got a couple out today. Fished the past two days. I'm trying to think if we've caught a fish on a bigger bait. Just a little bitty brim head out there on a five volt hook. Caught a 58, little bitty piece of bait as big as my thumb. And had a guy trip yesterday, had a guy catch a 49. A little strip as big as my thumb. On a rod right next to a whole crappie. Well, as I was drifting across here, I was coming across this deep water. I was starting to make my way up here. I was gonna come across this underwater point where this other deep ditch comes in. So I've got some changes here in elevation. Uh, I've got this point, changes here. I was kind of hopeful that, man, I'm gonna get it right on this area. I may catch some fish. Well, it didn't turn out that way. There was not exactly any fish hanging in here. It wasn't until I got over in this area that I started getting bit again. Uh, I just had one come off on the planer board. And I was just resetting it. That's it over my shoulder sitting there swinging. And this rod went off. Bite is not exactly on fire today, but I'm catching fish. We got an inflow of some muddy water from some rain a couple of days ago. So this water's a little bit stained. It's not exactly clear, but I'm still dragging it. I still think I can catch fish in here. Normally I like to anchor up in muddy water, but I'm gonna drag it. We're getting bit. I don't think the bite's gonna be on fire doing what I'm doing. So I'm kind of looking for a better fish. So we will see. This is not the big one I'm looking for, but it's not Channel Cat City either. So. Lose reel. Aftermarket power handle, slime cat rod, and the monofilament. That's the tackle breakdown. Work him over to the side of the boat here. It's a good blue, an angry blue. I don't want to be in the boat. I want to get a decent fish on bit bigger piece of bait there he tore off the back of that one I gotta quit lipping these fish my thumb is getting the dookie bit out of it tore off the back of that crappy carcass there we go the future back alive there you go that's three in the boat just dragging a flat now, come across an area where two rivers come together. Uh, no real bites in there. So uh, I'm gonna keep dragging down through here and see what's on this flat. Now what happened was I was drifting up onto what I call a flat. Uh, this big area through here um, is relatively, there's not much change in elevation from here at the river channel all the way over here to the bank. If you look, these contour lines are very far apart. That means there's very subtle changes. All this area over here that you would think that I would normally look at and go, wow, there's gotta be fish around this structure, tight lines, you know, lots of fish. Wasn't happening, well, wasn't happening. It wasn't until I got up in here in this flat that I started getting bit and started putting some fish in the boat. Got one on the slime cat rod. We're slowly plucking some fish out of the water here. Uh, no monsters. I've come out of the, the rain debris that's field. In. There's a debris field down here where it's dumped in. And now I'm out of the dingier water and something a little more clear. Not muddy. Not clear. Just more clear than muddy. We got a little one eating here. I'm going to find one big one. Where's the Chana cat? Pow! Popped loose into the bilge. Found him! There he is. Little channel cat. It's about four. We're gonna see if we can get on a big one. It's not an on fire big fish bite. So I'm kind of hopeful that there's some big fish in here or it's not an on fire small fish bite. I generally, when I'm looking for big fish, if I can 
find an area that I'm not getting hammered with small fish, I usually do better. So it's kind of scattered the whole bite period. So keep dragging, see if we can find one. Now, if you look at the bigger picture here, you can see why this is such a good drift to make with this wind that I had. I could start over here in deep water, come across, hit some points, some, uh, you know, steep structure underwater there, and then come up onto a flat. So I had pretty much everything I could fish outside of being right on the bank. Uh, and this is a good area. And it proved on this particular day that it was a good strategy because this flat was holding fish. Now, why is that? I don't know, uh, to be perfectly honest. Uh, like I said, we caught a couple over toward the river channel, and but we started catching them more and more in this flat. Were fish just all over the place out through here? I think so. I think that's what it was. I think there was fish pretty much. There was a few in the river channel, a few on the ledges, a few uh, out on the flats. This flat was just a big area. It was a nice straight drift, and that's why I chose to drag across here. We've got one going on this planer. <laughs> Yep. This is on now. Still got line going out on that glass. Just hooked back out from that fish. It's another small one. Kane uh, seemed to find a magical big fish. Is that a fish? That was a snag. Okay. The yeah, other rod was doing something odd. I'm going to pull this planer off of here for ease of operation. This is a small fish. And I can just do that. Again, guys, this is not something. Probably better popping the clip unless you're got a little experience keeping these lines tight. But you can lose a fish doing this. So this one you absolutely have to get to the boat. You can do that. But I just say you're You can lose them easily is what I'm getting at. Uh, popping those uh, planer boards off. You're better off popping the clip, but we're not fishing a tournament. We're not, it's not that critical that we get one in the boat. This is just another channel cat, feisty channel cat. Apparently working this mud and debris line down through here is what it looks like. I've got several channel cats now. There's this inflow with this debris. They're in here. Fun the cats, but not big ones. Now, were there any areas that were producing more fish than others out here? Well, I would say the center of this flat seemed to hold more fish. The uh, edges around the river channel, not so much. It really didn't catch anything. And you'd think those would be hot areas for catching fish anytime you have that steep structure. But it was really just across this flat. Are there mussels out there? Who knows? Were shad moving through there? It did mark a few schools of shad. Some of this stuff was redistributing after the spawn. So that could be what it was. But again, it's a great way to just cover water on a big flat like this. Uh, would it work anchoring? Possibly so. You can anchor out here. You're kind of just taking a stab into the dark though if you do that because there's a whole lot of nothing, nothing really all that defined. I think if I was doing that, I'd be up here on some of these points, maybe some of these little places like this that have a whole lot of up and down if I wanted to anchor somewhere around here. That would be me, uh, my take on it. Uh, who knows, uh, I like being able to drift and I think if you're gonna catch catfish consistently from a boat, you need to learn how to drift and how to move those baits through the water. Um, it's gotta be a little bitty fish. I'm gonna nurse this one in, it's probably a channel cat. Just reeled on this one and it popped off and biting on it again. Small fish, I'm gonna walleye fish this one in. It's my new, or I say my new, my rebuilt Abu Garcia 6500 C3. I completely tore it apart. Rebuilt it, cleaned it. It was squealing, it needed a doctor. If you don't clean your reels yourself, you want somebody to do it, Pipeline Tackle. Check them out on Facebook. Pipeline Tackle, just like a, a gas pipeline. They're a real pipeline for fixing stuff. Good guys, do good stuff. I've got a video up with them. Another channel, I'm uh, starting to lose confidence in getting on the big fish here. I'm getting into a lot of channel catfish.
Now, one of the other cool things about drifting on one of these big flats is it's a great place to put out planer boards. Uh, due to the lack of real rough bottom structure, you don't get hung up a lot, so you can really put out a lot of planer boards and cover a lot of water. Uh, you know, normally I'm running one or two per side. Here you can run three per side. You could go from covering 60 feet to 100 feet of water very easily. And uh, it's a very good tactic to cover water. And on this particular day, I was getting a lot of fish on those planer boards. Let's see, it's the one on the planer board. Today is planer board city for bites. I'm not sure what's up with that. These fish must not like my boat today. It must smell. Planer board day. It's funny, some days you kill them on the boards, some days you don't. Today it's all planer boards. Let's see if I can get this board off of here. Make my life easier. Poof. There we go. Let's see if I can navigate him across some lines here. Feels a little heavier. It's not a big fish, probably a blue. He's gonna to stay to the outside of everything, I believe. It's okay, we can deal with that. We can make him come where we need him to go to. Right there. Still catching fish. One interesting fact, we hadn't caught one on any of the down lines. I think this is fish number, all right, popped off right there. Head shaking like a channel cat. Uh, that right there to the boat came out. Get off of that, there we go. Haven't had uh, any on the down lines. That was fish number eight, he's right there. Uh, and none have come on the down lines. So, or fish number seven, I believe. Uh, I've got some of these suspended under the boat, a few cranks off the bottom. Hadn't caught a fish on them yet, so that's fishing. Now, if you look at this area, you go, well, is that the only time you can fish it when you have an east wind? No, I could have fished this from, you know, north down to south or south to north if that was the way the wind was blowing uh, and if fish were in here. All it would have meant was I was just having shorter drifts. If the fish were concentrated on this flat, I was just going to have to make shorter drifts. It would make a drift. Maybe take me 30 minutes to get across there, reel everything in, go back down here, reset, come back across, and you just kind of do a, uh, a little hopscotch pattern across through there. So it's uh, not the only place to fish. Now, is this a great place to fish all the time? Absolutely not. Uh, this is one of those places that you've heard me talk about before where sometimes it's good, sometimes it's horrible. There's 50 other places on this lake just like this. Uh, that are the same way in the same type setup with the same type flat adjacent to a, uh, a, a adjacent to deeper water and they're all over the place. I chose this one just because of the convenience of drifting it with the wind. I can make a long drift, a long drag without having to reset. Like I was saying, planer boards have done good today. Not sure what it is, but I've hooked into a lot of fish on the planers today. Let's see if this one stays buttoned. Feels like it. I'm gonna try flipping the board off. Hooked up. Hooked up. We'll see which way he's gonna, he gonna go to the inside of this line. Yeah, gonna come straight up the back of the boat. Nice easy landing here. Fish number nine. I'm uh Easy, 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 simmer down here. Whoa, there he goes. He's fired up, the fired up fish. He's not super huge, he looks like a teener, but he's very, very aggressive. Yep, nice teener sized fish. He is wanting to run. Run, baby, run. I'm gonna winch him up here. Get off the main line there. You see. There we go. Poof. Poof. Little belly. It's an eater. 
He's eating. Get the fish there. Is he gonna be? Yeah, 13 pounds. Uh, easy. Calm down. Don't make a mess. Yeah. Good blue cat. Back alive. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No. No, do, do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good.